understand your direction. Help me. Help my own belief. Strengthen my heart. Strengthen my heart. Strengthen my mind. Strengthen my hand. Make me who you want me to be. Help me along the way. The road is not easy. The road is not getting easy. The road seems not to be easier. But your ways are perfect, O oh Lord. Your might no one can dispute. Help me this morning. Give me a word. Send your word to me. Speak to my soul. Speak to my heart. Heal me in a new way, my Father. That I will be perfect before you. That my walk before you will be great the way you want it to be. That I will stand, O oh God. And at the end of the day, that I will not have lost all things, but I will have gained you, O God. Be thou exalted, O King of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's be seated. Praise the Lord. This morning, we are speaking on a topic called dealing with fear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dealing with fear. At the end of today, we should be able to understand how to deal with our fears. How to come out on top the way the Bible wants us to be, the way God wants us to be. Fear, according to the dictionary, it says it's a, it's a very unpleasant emotion. That is caused by maybe danger is around the way, there's pain, there's harm. But that the emotion is a very unpleasant one. If you don't deal with your fears, before you know it, it enters worry. You find that you worry in the morning, you worry in the noon, you worry at night. You worry all the time you are worried. If you don't deal with the fear and that emotion that comes with it, it will gradually creep in like a leech. And if you don't walk with it, if you don't walk it out, before you know it, anxiety comes in. Depression will follow. That is not what God wants for us. So we want to look at the scriptures this morning on how to deal with our fears. Praise the Lord. The entire, entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you will see places where fear was exhibited. Fear, fear, fear. So on the long run, I can say the Bible, as per fear, is divided into two aspects. One, the fear of the Lord. And the second one was the one, Second Timothy 1.7 finally kept, gave a name to. And he called it a spirit of fear. So in the whole Bible, when we read, we will see that the fear of the Lord is prevalent. And then a spirit of fear was also prevalent. Second Timothy 1, 7 says something. Second Timothy 1, verse 7. Say, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. And of love and of a sound mind. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's why when mom will when Pastor Blessing will tell us that, don't, especially when she's talking to the choir, she will say, when you are singing, even if somebody has sang a song and they sang it one way, when they get into your hand, rearrange it sometimes. So when a song is calling, a God. You change it and say, the God. Because he is not a, he is not among the multitude. He is the only one. So when I say I'm serving a God, that means I'm, 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 is a singular, I'm saying that among every other God, there is a God. But in my matured state as a Christian, I know that there is no other, like mommy would say, there is no other God. There is only the God that we serve. So, 2 Timothy said, God has not given us 
a spirit of fear. But he has given us power. He gave us the ability to love. To love him. To love ourselves. To understand love. And he gave us the soundness of mind. We will look at those things this morning. Praise the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the second aspect of fear. That we'll be looking at this morning. Deuteronomy 13 verse 4. The book of Deuteronomy 13, uh, chapter 13 verse 4 said, Serve only the Lord your God and fear him alone. Obey his commandments. Listen to his voice and cling to him. Deuteronomy 13 verse 4. Serve only the Lord your God. Fear him alone. Did you understand that part I just said? Alone. 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 Don't fear situation. Don't fear circumstances. Don't fear the cockroaches. Don't fear that bat that's perched on your window. He said, fear him alone. Obey his commandments. Listen to his voice and cling. Cling. Glue yourself to him. Praise the Lord. As a believer or a non-believer, you must be able to decode when fear comes in. When you are walking in fear, not that you are walking in prudency. You know, Pastor Blessing was saying something the other day. That after you have walked, walked, God, walk, and you feel like eating chicken, go and eat it and stop. Save. Not that she's saying that you should not save money. Not that she's saying that every day you should not say it's chicken that you feel like eating. And you know that your capacity cannot carry it every day. That is not what she's saying. What she's saying is that you should not live in the fear that you will not be able to see something to eat tomorrow. To live in the belief that your heavenly father is able to carry you through. So that means you are not working as a gluten, number one. But you are working in simplicity of heart. And in, in how will I call it? You are just, you have submitted yourself that the power of God is able to carry you through. Praise the Lord. We want to look at the Bibles and the some of the stories to let God know that fear is not only for the young. So you say that it's because he's young that he's always afraid. Mm -mm. Fear does not remove the hold. You can say, how old are you that you are still afraid? No. Fear deals with both the weak. It deals with both, uh, even the, the strong. It deals with the rich. It deals with the poor. It's an emotion that you cannot escape from unless you learn to deal with it. And you know the tools to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We want to first of all look at Elijah. Who have not heard of Elijah? The God of Elijah sent down fire. Mommy was talking about Elijah some few weeks back. And she said, Elijah was a very stubborn and I no go Greek kind of prophet. But when situation enters circumstances, Elijah fear, eh? Caught him and he ran. Praise the Lord. This in, the same Elijah that he said because children were abusing him. He called down bears to come and eat them. I will link all these fears together so you will see the reason why we fear this fear. Praise the Lord. Second Kings, no, First Kings 16, 17, 18, 19 chapter. Please, you go read it at home. Talked about that story of Elijah. When Ahab was the king in Israel and was married unto this wonderful woman called Jezebel. Evil to the core. And then, because of the way she was manipulating the land, even the prophets of God became prophets of Baal. One day, Elijah went to Ahab and said, See, rain will not fall. And truly, truly, rain did not fall. And God still told him three years later, Go back to Ahab and let me release rain. 
But before he released the rain, he said, let us all go to Mount Carmel. Let us go and decide today who is God. So everybody gathered themselves, the entire Israel, and they went. He said, I am the only prophet of God standing. You have over 400 prophets of Baal. Bring them. Give me a cow. Give them a cow. Call upon your own God. The one that answers by fire. We will decide today that he is God and let everybody follow. So according to the story, they called and called and did and did and did everything. By afternoon, Elijah started taunting them. Ah, ah. Maybe he's sleeping. No? Wake your God small now. Maybe he went on a journey. Shout his name better. So they started cutting themselves according to their customs because it's the height of their worship, blood sacrifice. But the more they do, nothing happened. By evening, when it was getting to evening, Moses, um, Elijah said, you people have tried. It's my turn. So he gathered 12 stones representing each uh, name of Israel, the sons of Jacob. Cut, build an altar. Cut the cow into pieces. Lay it on the altar. Tell them to make gutters around it. Tell them to fetch water. Pour upon it. Fetch water. Pour on it. <laughs> fetch another water. They pour on it. And then Elijah just said some few simple words. That God, if you are the God I serve, true, true, paraphrasing, show these people. So you can imagine like I was telling the children. As all of them were sick, because you know now, if you have been there since morning, some have sat down on the floor. Some must have been drawing in the sand. Some must have been weaving something. And the next thing they just say, boom! Fire everywhere. And that day was so great that when Elijah said, Herb was there. Mom, Abby, Herb was there. When Elijah said, seize all the prophets, everybody seized because they were so afraid of these prophets. Everybody was mimicking as if they were serving Baal. Even the ones that were not serving Baal were trying to mimic that because if they just managed to know that you are not really worshipping the Baal, you are in trouble. They will seize your life. Evil will just, they will just... So they said, ah, finally, they seized them and they killed all 400 prophets. So, by the time Ahab got home and said, hey, if you see what happened today, Jezebel, hey, all your prophets, they are gone. Hey, Jezebel was so angry. He now sent message to Elijah. See, what you did to these prophets, ha, unless my name is not Jezebel again, you must die this death. The next thing, Elijah packed his load. Via, he ran. Out of fear. So will you tell me that Elijah did not know God? Please. Somebody should answer. Okay. Are we going to say that Elijah did not know the power of God that it is mighty like this? But yet, when push came to shove, that, that spirit of fear entered. Why are we answer? We look at Elisha. There was this king in Aram that kept terrorizing, that wants to keep terrorizing their land. And every time he strategized that, we will go and sleep in this valley. Then we will crawl like this, and then we will just attack them like this. Elisha will know in his house and go and meet the king. See, they want to crawl like this. They want, ah. Before they go, they will have ambushed. The, ah, ah, what is it? It has happened once, twice, ah, ah, three, four. At a point, they went to inquire that something is wrong. Is that that we have a spy? Or we must find out why they are, they are always knowing our plan. They now said, ah, is this prophet that is called Elisha? Before you make that plan, he knows in his room. So that one said, yeah, so that's their stronghold. Let's go and kill him. So Elisha's servant went out that day only to see armies everywhere. Ah, I'm sure he must have asked somebody, what is happening here? Ah, they will have said, ah, this is Elisha they came to kill. Hey! The boy ran home. Hey! My Oga! My Oga! Come and see army everywhere. Ah! They fool everywhere. They say they send them to come and kill you. Elisha said, don't worry. And Elisha prayed and said, open his eyes. 
let him see. And he saw the host of heaven all around the mountain for their sake. So you see that it's not only the mighty that fear, that even the lowly, that is almost share servants, learning how to become prophets, became afraid too. We look at Deborah. Mommy spoke about Deborah last week. When this army, see Sarah is the general, over 900 chariots. Chari! If any, if any city that hears that this man is coming, they will go and make alliance that they were not even interested in making before. And then, when Deborah prayed and he said, Barak, don't worry, go. God said, I will give you victory. <laughs> I say, hey, victory. Okay, oh. Hey, Bosha, make we go together. You know, if you are always there, we know that the victory is sure. Even when Deborah told him that if I go with you, like Pastor Blessing told us last week, that a woman will take the glory. If not that fear, a normal human being will say, don't worry, Abby, ah, if it is a woman, ah, how can I lead an entire battle? And it will not mean that I will now be singing his praise. Because they must sing somebody's praise at the end of the day. But the fear will not let him see. Beyond that, it's only Deborah that is a symbol of uh, God is there. Praise the Lord. That is a king. We look at Job. Job's greatest fear in life came to pass. His fear of being poor. His fear of leaving his family. Was, he was afraid of it. So the Bible told us that he's always doing sacrifice. Sacrifices all the time. On behalf of his children. On behalf of this. Yet, the thing came and came to pass. So from all this, we see that it is not only the young or the old. Or fear attacks everybody. Everybody. And for those ones that are even backbiting Christ, those ones are the ones that may look worse. Because by the time they come out of it, they wonder, why was I so afraid? After all these things that I've known about God. From these four people, we can ascertain that it was not because they did not know. Because Job spoke well about God. Am I lying? The servant of Elisha saw everything Elisha does all the time. In fact, Elisha did more miracles than any prophet. Praise the Lord. Barak knew that God can save as truly as a... Uh, the Buddha said it, but eh, but eh, but eh. So what was the fear that came? That means the fear wasn't about whether God was alive. The fear wasn't about whether God was faithful. It wasn't about whether God is mighty. The, the fear was only about not really understanding the plan of God. They didn't know the direction. Elijah has seen God bring out fear. Bring down fire for goodness sake. He saw the, the, it's not as if somebody, it was a boom kind of fire. Because it wasn't a small spark that now started. The Bible says consume the altar. And then the next thing he ran. God had told him what he should go and do on mankind. But when Jezebel now sent message, God was silent. In that point, he didn't know, what, because they've killed every prophet that stood now. None of them has escaped. Is it not the same God we are serving? It's the same God that uh, prophet uh, Samuel that they killed three days ago. He's serving. That means who I'm calling. Why am I sure that it is me that God will not spare? So, because Elijah did not know the next plan of God, that fear entered. Ah, maybe I finished my work with God now. Die. Hey, my God. Hey, I don't want to die like this. He ran. Praise the Lord. The servant couldn't see the plan of God. Couldn't see it. He knew God was there. But as at that time when army was everywhere, how will they escape now? They have, they, have, uh -uh, they have settled every entrance, exit of the whole community. They were everywhere. He couldn't see the next plan. So me, so you, we found out that as a believer, the major reason why we fear is because we don't just understand the next plan of God. We don't understand where this thing that I'm entering, that I've entered, 
how am I going to get out of it? This thing that I'm afraid that may likely happen, like Job, how is it possible for me to survive if it happens? So that lack of understanding the plan of God makes fear take over a Christian, take over a man. And if a man is not ready to deal with that fear, he enters worry. From worry, you become anxious. You come outside, you look beautiful. But inside of you, you are scattered. You are in pain. At night, you don't sleep well. You can't even sleep well. There are so many things that are in front of you that you will say, God, why is it like this? And then you look at this problem that I'm inside. If this thing just managed to shift like this, hey, it has finished with that too. You, it, you begin to torment yourself. Fear is torment. Nobody says they don't know that. Where does that torment come from? Is that lack of peace. Lack of ability to concentrate on what will take you out of that fear. Praise the Lord. How do we then deal with fear? We deal with fear with the other side of fear. The fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah, my God, give me strength and time. Praise the Lord. We are dealing with fear. You deal with fear. With the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. To deal with fear, you have to start with a robust and a good dose of the fear of God. Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 said, Fear of the Lord is the foundation, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm saying it from NLT, is the foundation of your wisdom as a Christian. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of your wis wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Permit me to rearrange that thing. According to what is spoken there, it said the, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One will give you good judgment. Let me rearrange it. The knowledge of the God you serve gives you wisdom. That wisdom will help you to have better judgment over situations and circumstances. That is what that place is saying to say. You know that their English then was very tough. Praise the Lord. When you know God, when you know God, when you gather the knowledge of God in your heart, you'll be able to make good, sound judgment. That is where, where first, Second Timothy 1 7 said, He gives you a sound mind. A sound mind. Praise the Lord. The right dose of his knowledge will increase your reverence and fear of him. Your fear of him brings peace and strength to you and the ability to submit to him. Praise the Lord. That means your knowledge of God will automatically allow, give you the knowledge to fear him, to understand what it meant by fear, fearing God. And then that fear of God will give you the wisdom that you need for church to make good sound judgment. We are looking at Job this morning. Job started his work with fear, everyday fear that, yeah, if all these things happen to me, if this thing should happen to me, what will I do? If this thing should happen to me. When trouble, and then trouble still came. And for a while, he keep wallowing in self-pity. And kept talking about his righteousness. The same way. The same thing that happens to us. When we are in one situation for too long. When something is causing us fear. We begin to tell God. But God I serve you well now. Ah God you know that I'm always in church. You know I'm always giving to the poor. You know I give to the work of God. You count all your self righteousness. Job was like that. Until his friend. Eliu. Told him and said. See. Stop looking for answers. You look at Job from 32 to 37. He said, It makes Job understand how great God is, and that people cannot understand all God allow, but must trust Him. That was trying to tell him, just trust God. 
He may, you may not understand everything about God. Just trust him. He made him to understand that most of the times we don't have solutions and answer to everything that we go through. But that we just need to trust God. Praise the Lord. When Elihu stopped there, God now took over. God now started asking Job questions. Questions after questions. Questions after questions. Chapter 38, chapter 39. Do you know how the world was created? Do you know how the pillar of this was done? Do you know how the bears do this? Do you know how this was? By the time God finished, Job's faith, faith went into another dimension. He understood the fear of God, that this God is too much. It's too big. It's too mighty. It's too awesome. God's dealing with Job made Job recognize that God's ways are perfect. That he knows how to solve everything. That he can work it out. Praise the Lord. God showed Job that he does not have the ability or right to judge him. That he couldn't have judged God. The God who created the heavens and the earth. Nor does he have the, the right to ask God why. Are you asking God why? Are you judging God? The same way God is speaking to you this morning as I spoke to Job. Praise the Lord. God gave Job reasons why you should fear him. By the time God finished, Job saw the grandeur of God. His majesty. He saw him as the king. The one that has all the wisdom to do all things. Praise the Lord. Therefore, from all these things that we learn from Job, we come to realize that fear is not of the one that creeps your heart. Fear that we are talking about in God is the one that is reverence. Where you collate all this work, you gather them together, and your, your heart will say, ah, ah, I never see this kind of God before. Where you are so, you, you reverence him so much that you can't just fathom while you worry. Praise the Lord. Know that God's action do not depend on yours or mine, but he will always do what is best regardless of what we think is fair. He also gave us reasons to, to fear him. Made us realize that he's always there. Scriptures over scriptures telling you that he's always there. He will always be there. Praise the Lord. Scriptures that made us realize that we are answerable only to him. Scriptures that tells us that he's, he's, he has delights. He delights in those who fear him. Psalm 147 verse 11. Psalm 147 verse 11, NLT. The Lord's delight is in those who fear him. Those who put their hope in his unfailing love. His delight in, in, is in those that reference him. So when you feel your heart on how awesome God is, how great, how majestic, then whatever comes your way, you will say, no. Who are you before the God of Israel? Who are you before the God of bliss of God's glory ministry? Praise the Lord. What do we do to maintain our fear of God? Because a good dose of the fear of God will drive away. It's like a light. It will just drive away every form of darkness that is in your heart. It's for us to believe. Believe that God is in control. That he directs, that he preserves, that he maintains his created order. Although we may not see it, God is go divinely, you must believe that God is divinely governing all the moral and political aspects of a man's life. You must believe that. 
You must believe that by spending time to look, to observe his majesty. Look around you. What do you see? Has the sun ever fallen down before? Have you ever heard that the moon in a cycle, it doesn't come out? Once that cycle comes, the sun will come out. Once the cycle ends, they go down. Go, and it has been there ages after ages. Praise the Lord. How do we then walk in the fear of the Lord? How do we walk in the fear of the Lord? It's by keeping him in his right place. Put him in your heart. Don't let him ever live there. Put him in your mind. Always make your mind perceive how great he is. Put him in your soul. So that when you sleep and those dreams come, your soul will say, no, you don't know the God I serve. Put him in your spirit. Your spirit rise up as a giant. And is always there to testify that the God is great. That the God you serve is great. Put him on your lips. Every word you speak. And every way you speak those words. Let it always come forth that you believe that God is mighty. Put him there on your lips. Every minute and every second. Any other word come out. Ask for forgiveness immediately. And choose the right word. Put him in your ears. In your ears. Tell yourself that anything you hear is only that God is great. That you will not give your ear to what is not right. Praise the Lord. Put him in your eyes. Tell your eyes that I will only see the goodness of God. I will not see that fear. I will not see that trouble. I will only see my God. Praise the Lord. Never make light of anything. Don't make light of anything that belongs to God that they said is about God. Is it really true? All these things that they are always saying. Don't make light of the things of God. Don't make light of it at all. Believe it. Because to live this way is wisdom. To live this way is life. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 23 says something. Proverbs 19, 23. Fear of the Lord leads to life. Bringing security and protection from harm. The fear of the Lord leads to life. It leads to life. Carrying God in your soul leads to life. Carrying God in your lips leads to life. Carrying God in your subconsciousness and your actions leads to life. That is what that place is saying. Psychologically, emotionally, carrying God leads to life. New King James, that was the New King James version said the B part that he who has it will abide in satisfaction. Who has the fear of God will abide in satisfaction. That is how a, a New King James version said that same Psalm 19:23. Job 28, verse 28 says something. Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Praise the Lord. May God open our spirit this morning for us to understand that we don't have any reason to fail, to fear. Don't fear to look to see God the, the, for who he is. Don't fear to see God the way he is. Because fearing God requires balance. Praise the Lord. Don't only see God as the, the good God. Only good God is the faithful God. Is the kind God. Is the fulfilling God. Is the mighty God. Don't only see God as only good, good, kind God. Balance it. 
See him as the mighty and the terrible one. See him as the dreaded champion. See him as the vengeful God that doesn't take nonsense. The God that does not, that does not permit disobedience. The God that cannot, cannot be host, cannot even manage it. Praise the Lord. See him like that. See him like the God that pays. If you do good, he pays you. If you do bad, he will pay you. Balance your fear like that. Add to all these things his majesty. Add to him that he is king above all. Add to his splendor. His grandeur. Add to all those things that ah, is too much. Is the God that resides in the light. Light that nobody can, you can only see a form. Colors of different Beautiful colors, not that white light. No, beautiful colors. See him like that. Balance your fear of God. And in that balance, you get the wholeness of that dose, of that reference that you need to chase out every other thing. Because if I see God as a good God, but also as a terrible and mighty God, and also as a vengeful God, and also as a God that does not take nonsense, and also as a king over all, then I carry him in every aspect. So when the enemy comes like this, I push the aspect of God that I carry to it, that we work for it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah, fill your mind with God's promises. Fill your mind every time. Just keep telling yourself his promise. Just keep reminding yourself. It's not that you have forgotten, you know, but just keep saying it. Keep saying it. Especially when those thoughts arise. Open your Bible immediately. Open that part with your phone. Just read it out. That this is the part I believe. This is the part I'm holding on to. Psalm 115 verse 11. Says, as you fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. As you fear him. Trust him. He is your helper. And he is your shield. That is what the Bible is saying. If you fill your mind with his promises. It will bring confidence to you. There is a level of confidence you walk around with. If you fill your heart with God's promises. That no matter what comes my way. No matter what comes your way. That the Lord yourself sees. That is the one who that your path to follow in life. His ways are not always easy. Mommy talked about Naomi last week. And there we found out that God's ways are not always easy. Sometimes they are not even sweet at all. Praise the Lord. But know that his ways are always best. So I don't know the reason why you are going through what we are going through. I don't know the reason why these things are difficult. Or how it is difficult. But I know that his ways are always best. And at the end of it all, you will see it. Praise the Lord. Remind yourself daily of the promises of God. Malachi 4 chapter 2 says something. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. See, if you remind yourself of God's promises every day, you will see the blessing that is inside. Praise the Lord. Malachi 4 verse 2 said, But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness, we arise with healing, in his wings. Praise the Lord. So you shall go out and get fat lastilled <laughs> sheep. Still fed cows. You know what still ca fed calf is? Those ones that they bring food to all the time. Don't even have to don't stress yourself. Morning they have brought their grass. They have places that they just carry them. They will go and eat. For those who fear my name, 
the son of righteousness, we arise with healing, with healings. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1. Let us read that. I didn't want to waste a lot of time. That's why I'm not opening, opening, opening. Am I right? Deuteronomy 20, verse 1. Listen to this thing that God said. When you go out to fight your enemies and you face horses and chariots and an army greater than your own. <laughs> Look at how God faced that thing. He said, when you go out to face armies, when you go out to look for a job, and everybody sitting around you, they are wearing Amani suits. When you go out and you want to start a business, and all the money with you cannot actually even really start anything big. My masculine shop is like food or the brim like this. Praise the Lord. When you go out, and it seems as if nothing works, all the business, nothing is really coming from it. Praise the Lord. When you go out to fight your enemies and you face horses and chariots and an army greater than your own, do not be afraid. You think God does not understand what he's saying? Do you think God does not? Why will he cause God for every camp that the children of Israel stays? They should be gathering gold from there so that they will have chariots. In fact, laid with gold. No golden chariots. Not gold. With horses, but they draw gold. Can God <laughs> not do it for them? Yet, the same God that holds all the power in his hands told them that if you go to fight somebody and that country is richer than you and you saw their horses, their Arabian horses, be all these ones when they ride, Arabian horses, black and shiny, in fact, they are taller than, like, ah, very muscled. And you see their chariots, you see that the craftsman, craftsman, craftsmanship that did these chariots, ah, we don't get that kind of person. Because the way, way he do package the wheel and the thing. Before the horse drag him, he don't reach that end. God knew they would meet challenges. God knew that they would meet things that when they see it like this, they will be shaking like this. They will shake from head to toe. They will tell them, say, which kind will I be this one? So he prepared their heart. Then when you go out and you meet these things, when you are on your bed and these thoughts come to you, when you are walking and it says as if, where will I ever get out of this point that I am? Say, when you get to that point, don't be, af don't even, just focus on me. Praise the Lord. The Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt is with you. Let that reverence be in your soul that he is with me. That this God that is mighty who uses the heart as his foot too, he is with me. I don't know his plans. I can't see that plan. I don't even understand how that plan can be executed. Nothing shows that, that pl any plan can even work. But he is with me. So any two way he works it out. You know that's the funniest thing about God. I finished this message before I finally listened to mommy's message on Sunday. It shall end in praise. And it's as if God is just doing a part two. Just a small portion. You must come to the realization that it will end in praise. Doesn't matter whether it is two years, whether it is three years, I will stand with my God. I will hold on to him. I will cling to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you prepare for battle, 
The priest must come forward to speak to the troops. He must say to them, listen to me, all you men of Israel. Do not be afraid as you go out to fight your enemies today. Do not lose heart or panic or tremble before them. For the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemy and he will give you victory. Why did God need them to keep talking? Because sometimes fear causes us to be deaf, dumb, blind. Everything will just shut down. <clears throat> It is as if you have never heard the word of God before. Because if you carry this word, you will look at the thing, or you will listen to this message, Pastor Blessing preached, and you almost look at, you resemble my matter. Ah, at the end, it will be no work for my matter, Jerry. <laughs> so, what is God telling us there? Just focus, don't see anything, only see me. That was what God was telling the children of Israel. When you see all those Arabian horses and those chariots, just blink your eye like this and decide that it is God you are seeing. I mean, what do you think could have caused David to go and stand when he sees something? I'm sure Goliath was over seven feet tall. Like I was telling uh, Star Mary this morning. I said, Star Mary, the only day that I wore high heels, you now decide to wear low this thing. And I look like a mountain. <laughs> because we were sharing him. It was as if I was not standing over her like this. The same way, can you imagine? David must have been looking at Goliath like this. What could have caused a young man like that? Conquered hearts. They looked the thing up like, nobody said even just all alone. Now like this, he pulled everywhere, break it. But the heart of that young man was strong. In his heart, the only thing he put in his heart is that my God is bigger than you. Read everything that David thought. The only the summary of everything David thought was that my God is greater than you. Doesn't matter how many people fear you. Me, I will not fear you. Because the God of Israel that I hear about is bigger than you. Ah, have you got it to that point? You have not got it to that point where everybody is afraid, only you is strong. You have not gotten there. The fear that you are facing is only you that you are facing that fear. So imagine the fear that hundreds of people are fearing. For days, nobody came out and said, we can fight you. Then one small boy, I'm sure there was no muscle. He must have been carrying all the things like this. Because when he carried it, he said, ah, I mean, I don't keep me. I can't carry all these things. Because they carry shield that gave him. They carry him later. Ah, ah. The boy put sugar in the shoulder, could not raise. Ah, he said, I beg. I can't come and die before the death even come. <laughs> Remove all these things. Yet he faced that fear. And he didn't see what cost him, what may likely, he didn't see what may likely cause him to fear. Every time he blinks his eyes, he only saw the God of Israel. Can we do that? Can you do that to those situations? Can you do that when you enter your room and you're alone on your bed? That any time you blink your eyes, the only thing you see is the splendor and the grandeur of the God you call upon day and night. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak, skip a lot of things. Are you still afraid? Remind yourself every day of God's faithfulness. Then you will really be able to say, Praise the Lord. According to what David said in Psalm 56, verse 3 to 4. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Then you'll still be able to say, according to what David said in Psalm 27, verse 1. That the Lord is the light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? When you continue to read that, that verse, 
that chapter 27 gets to pay, say, this, in this I have confidence. In this I have confidence that my God is able. Praise the Lord. Keep saying his wonderful work. Appreciate the testimonies of him that you hear. Keep your Bible close to you. Rely on the Holy Spirit. Keep the word of God in your heart. Praise the Lord. Keep asking God for help. Don't ask God, don't stop asking God for you see when you see Oyibo, when you read, when you check Google, and you say, I'm I'm at, uh, the prayer of strength, and they bring out prayer for you. The typical African person will say, Me, I know if you pray, which kind did you in prayer be all these ones? Yet, have you ever seen anywhere in the whole Bible where anybody prayed? And the prayer is, God, if you're the, you, you must want to. No. It's always about humility. When, was the last, when is the last time you speak to your father? Can you remember the last time that you spoke to your father? I'm not talking about, ah, I am the am. I don't can. No. I'm talking about, it doesn't matter whether you are kneeling down or sitting down. Where you just say, God, my father, you are my strength. I need your help. This is how this thing is doing me. I have got, I just went this way today. I went to look for the thing, but it didn't happen. Father, you are, is that not how you see prayers in the Bible? That is the way you see when you go write prayer too. But I don't know, we have this thing that everything must be, oh, chaka, ki, pa, 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 pa. There's nothing good, there's nothing bad about that too. But every, that, every one hour prayer that you pray every day, that one hour prayer you pray every day, how many minutes is that did you actually speak with your father? That you concentrate, you saw yourself before the throne of God, that you are kneeling down there and you are just telling your father, ah, bake by your son. How many times? Because we found out that in the whole one hour, it's like, oh, ah, ooh, eh, e, ah, e, ah, e, ah. When you feel, you say, oh my God, the prayer today was too much. Yet, you have not spoken to God at all. It's in this New Testament that we do all those things. In the Old Testament, Moses prays for 40 days, lying down, no food, no water, nothing, lying down, just talking to God. Because then they didn't know this binding and casting. The only thing is just talk to your creator. God, help me. Father, please forgive us. Father, please, we want to fight this war. Sometimes it takes 40 days. Sometimes it is immediate. But they keep talking to God. Please, in those your, ah, e, ah, e, in all those your 172 MFM prayer point that you have downloaded, please, take a quality time to talk to your father. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41, sorry for taking time. Verse 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Take the peace of God. The peace that God gives is a gift. Take that gift. Tell yourself that I want to be at peace. I want to just to be at peace. John 14, 27 said, the peace that I have given you is not like the world give. Take that peace. Choose your faith over fear. Choose what you believe. Every time, choose what you believe over your fear. Praise the Lord. Jesus, after talking to the multitude, said, let us cross to the other side. And in their crossing, in the boat that they were, they said Jesus was sleeping. And then the storm rose. And they were shouting. And they called Jesus. And on the long run, Jesus said, don't you still have faith? Choose faith. Choose to remember. Praise the Lord. In conclusion, know that God will always show up. Be certain of it. Hold on to it. Even when it does not look like that. When Elijah was on Mount Sinai, there were storms everywhere, but God was not there. 
There was earthquake everywhere. God was not there. There was fire everywhere. God was not there. But God came as a whisper. Let him understand that you are not the only one standing for me. That there are still over like 7,000 people, both prophets, people that are just there serving God, but they cannot say it out loud because of Jezebel. Because he felt that he was the only one. Praise the Lord. God will always show up. God showed up for Elisha's servant in his fear. Trust him that he will show up in that place that you are seeking him for. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that God will help our feet. Amen. I pray that God will strengthen our feet. Amen. And God will help us. That all that we have heard between last week and this week, knowing that all we hand in praise, knowing that fear that keeps us bound can be destroyed, Amen. the Lord will help us to deal with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.